and standing up in Jerusalem and declaring, I am the Messiah, which is probably about 20, 25 years from now. When I give op opinion, I can be wrong, eh? you know that. In order for Israel to rule the world, Israel has to rule over the Arabs. We spoke about that last night. And this booklet, where is it? Here we are. Medina returns to the center stage in Akhir Zaman. This was my topic last night in Sub Subang Jaya. And we have this book in Bahasa and we have this book in Bahasa. Hmm? Outside. Israel has to impose its political and economic dominion over the Arabs as a preliminary to ruling over the world. Secondly, Israel has to impose her political and economic dominion over the Muslims, the entire world of Islam. And so Israel will have to wage war. We know for certain that one of the wars that Israel is going to wage is on Egypt. Oh yes. And when those fools with a capital F, I hope, they are listening to me, made the alliance with the, with the Zionist NATO to bring down Gaddafi, who was opposed to the Zionists, those absolute fools who said that they were Mujahideen, in bringing down Gaddafi with the help of NATO, now made Libya a NATO state. NATO is in charge, but they don't know it. Fools with a capital F. And so when the attack comes on Egypt, Egypt doesn't have a chance now. Because Israel will attack from the east and NATO will attack from the west and Egypt will be sandwiched in between. We know that's coming. We know that Israel wants to destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons and break up Pakistan. We know that. We know that Israel wants to attack Syria. Bring about regime change in Syria so that Syria could become another Libya. And those fools who were so foolish in Libya are equally foolish or even more foolish in Syria. And I'm not talking about the Mujahideen in Syria who have no links with the Zionists, none. And who would rather die than take a penny from Saudi Arabia. Who have no links with Saudi Arabia, no links with Qatar, no links with Jordan, nothing at all. And who is struggling in Syria? I am not speaking about them. Not at all. I'm talking about these fools who say they're Mujahideen and who are in alliance with NATO to bring down this Syrian regime. These are the ones I'm talking about. We're expecting that since they have not succeeded so far, they're going to wage war on Syria. It is in this scenario that we now want to introduce how Dajjal is going to exploit the Sunni Shia division to his advantage in Akhirul Zaman. The answer is he wants to provoke Sunni Shia civil war. That's what he wants to provoke. If he can succeed in provoking Sunni Shia civil war in the world of Islam, what would be the benefit for him and for the Zionists? Number one, Islam is going to look terrible <laughs> before the entire world on the stage of the world. Look at these Muslims at a time when they are back to the wall fighting for their very lives. Look at how foolish the Muslims are fighting amongst themselves. 
Islam is going to look so bad that whatever sentiment there may be in the world, sympathetic towards Muslims, even that might be lost. And that will be tremendously advantageous to Israel and to the Zionists and to their propaganda war in CNN and Al Jazeera and the newspapers and the television sets, you can just imagine. They're going to have a field day laughing at the Muslims who are fighting amongst themselves at this time. Number two, the Jal will consider it advantageous to provoke a Sunni Shia war because such a war will weaken both the Sunni and the Shia at a time when Sunni and Shia should be trying to build maximum strength and power to resist Israel and to resist the Zionists. Thirdly, Sunni Shia civil war is going to break up Pakistan. There's no way that Pakistan can survive. They are the ones who planned 9-11. And one of the reasons why they planned 9-11 is to be able to get a base in Afghanistan from which to target Pakistan. To attack Pakistan, to destroy Pakistan's nuclear plants and nuclear weapons and break up Pakistan into bits and pieces. They've not been able to do it for 10 years. Even though they had the presidency in their camp, a man named Parvez Musharraf, before he left, the Pakistanis were calling him Dog Musharraf. For 10 years, and this is to the credit of the Pakistani people, that they've not been able to do it as yet. They are actually waiting for civil war. The reason why they have all the drones killing the Pakistani people and even killing the Pakistani soldiers is because they were hoping to provoke civil war in the Pakistan armed forces. But it has not happened so far because the Pakistanis knew what they wanted and were denied it. But if they succeed in provoking Shia Sunni civil war in the world of Islam, goodbye Pakistan. But there's a fourth reason why Dajjal, why Dajjal would like to provoke Sunni Shia civil war. I'm going to restrict myself to these four reasons, but I'm sure tomorrow on YouTube you're going to see so many scholars intervening to give us a six and a seven and an eight and a ninth reason and so on. Iran is the Shia country, Paraxilas. For 25 years ago, Iran experienced a spectacular Islamic revolution. I am a student of international relations and in the, in the language, in the terminology of international relations, we say that that Islamic revolution in Iran was anti-systemic. And so the Zionists were very angry with the revolution in Iran. It not only threatened the Zionists, it also threatened the family kings and royal, fa royal houses because the Islamic revolution in Iran denounced monarchies among the Arabs, denounced it. The Islamic revolution in Iran also had problems for the Soviet Union who felt threatened. And as a consequence of the revolution in Iran, the Soviet Union intervened in Afghanistan in December 1979, if I am not wrong. 
the revolution in Iran has produced a government which has consistently for these last 29, 25 years opposed the Zionists. That's not what they want. The Dajjal doesn't want that. Sunni Shia civil war in Islam, in my opinion, is going to facilitate the effort for regime change in Iran. And so that a regime in Iran which is standing up against Israel and standing up all the, against all the clients of Israel in Saudi Arabia and Qatar and what have you, would be removed. And a new regime would come which will be more authentically Shia, sectarian Shia, and with which Israel might be able to make a deal. That is the biggest advantage of all.